in the likeness of God, and he breathed in our nostril the breath of life, and we become a living soul. And that's how we differ from animals, we differ from all the rest of the creation. Because we are, uh, when we look at this uh, uh, soul, the human soul, uh, we can see that we are created in the likeness and image of God. Another, another thing that we can uh, see in this, uh, in the human soul, when, is the potentiality. What is the potential of a human soul? A human soul that is being surrendered to God has the potential to be transformed to the likeness and image of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is our potential. Uh, another thing that we can see about the human soul, the human soul is, uh, uh, we can see the possibility. According to the Lord, all things are possible with God. So the moment we surrender our, our soul, our life to the Lord, uh, anything the Lord can do with our life when we surrender our lives to the Lord. I remember the, I remember the, the small lad who gave the two fish and five loaves, remember? And, and they said the song that we're singing all the time, uh, God can do anything when we put it in the master's hand. So anything that we put in the master's hands, uh, there's always possibility, right? Another thing that we can see about human soul, why a human soul is more than anything in this world is its durability, the durability of the soul. And what is this? According to Daniel 12.2, the, the human soul are infinite, right? The human soul is timeless, the human soul is dateless, the human soul is endless, and the human soul is measureless. So we can see that human soul is so valuable to the Lord. Uh, another thing that we can see is its uniqueness. Every human soul is unique. Every human soul is rare. We are unique and we are rare because we are made by God. And can you look at each other? Because we are one of a kind. You cannot find anybody that is like you, <laughs> right? Because we are one of a kind. And how, you know, how, how wise God is for doing that. According, uh, this is one of my favorite verse in Psalm 139, 14. And it says, I praise you, Lord, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are so wonderful. And I know that full well. Do you know that you and me are fearfully and wonderfully made? And so, why are we still looking for plastic surgery? Why are we still contented with having no sleep and all, all the lip that you can do? Because, uh, you know, because we are not contented with what the Lord has given to us. But to tell you the honest truth, when the Lord created us, He created us unique and one of a kind. Nobody is like you. Even the twin, even those are who, who are born twin, they are still different. And God made us that way. Now, another thing is, uh, another, uh, another truth about the, the, val the value of a human soul, the value of the human soul is its, its desirability. Desirability. Satan is fighting so hard till the end. Do you know that? He is fighting so hard till the end to snatch us away from the kingdom of God. If you are not aware, he is doing that till this day. The churches are not exempted because the churches are being snatched by God because we are on the last day. And the Bible says that on the last day, what will happen? On the last day, even those uh, Christians will going to turn cold unto the Lord. We will turn away from the, we will lose the faith. And so let's keep on uh, thinking about that. You know, look at your soul, a human soul, and what are the composition of a human soul? According to the, uh, my dictionary, the, the, the Bible dictionary, a soul is comprised of three parts. All of us have a mind, uh, which is the rational function. All of us have a heart, that is uh, where we, uh, we, um, we manifest complex uh, attitudes. 
and we have the will, the will or volition. Will or volition is the choosing, this is, uh, this is our way of choosing and deciding what is best for our life, right? We, uh, God has given us this privilege, God has given us this, uh, this uh, right to do, to, to, uh, the, the right of choice. And if the person is not with the Lord Jesus Christ yet, if you are not saved, then you have this mind and will and heart being influenced day by day by the devil. We have this heart that is being influenced by the world. And uh, as Christian, the moment we put our faith and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ and we enter into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, the Bible to tell us that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. We are indwelled by the Spirit. We are baptized by the Spirit. But then we, need, we, have, we have a job to do. And our job that we need to do is we need to surrender to the fullness uh, of the Holy Spirit for us to be filled by the Holy Spirit day by day of our lives. Why? Because we know that we are, but we are in a spiritual battle day in and day out. Aside from uh, our creativity, potentiality, possibility, durability, our realness or uniqueness, and our desirability, uh, why is it, you know, why is it foolish to do an exchange? Because the Bible says, for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Why is it foolish to do an exchange? Uh, number one, as you look at the verse, it says there, nobody gains the whole world. Nobody gains the whole world. Have you seen the millionaires and billionaires? Do they own the whole world? No, they only own portion of the world or maybe most portion of um, uh, majority of the part of the world, but they don't own the whole world. And we know that Satan is the one tricking us because his job is to trick people. His job is to deceive people. His job is to always Take us away from God. Take us away from God. And that is his job. And so, did you see anybody that owns the world? Actually, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and everything therein. Who is the real owner of the world? It's not Satan. It's the Lord. But why are we, uh, why are we believing Satan? Why are we believing Satan in such a way that we are attuning our mind and our hearts and our thoughts to the worldly pleasure, the worldly things that they said, well, we own this world. No, that's, that's a lie, that's a big lie because the world is owned by the Lord. Number two, why is it foolish to do an exchange? Uh, it's foolish to do an exchange because the part of the world you gain, the part of the world you gain, no matter how big it is, you cannot keep. You cannot keep. You cannot keep your riches. You cannot keep your possession. You cannot keep your jewelry. You cannot keep your houses, your land. Why? Because when you die, everything will be left behind. And uh, remember our lesson in stewardship when we uh, tackled the parable of the, the parable of the foolish man. Uh, the Lord said to him, He said, "Well." I have so many barns, I have so many riches, this is what I will do. I will give bigger barns, I will build bigger barns, and, I, and he said, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rest and be merry, right? That's what he said. So, what did the Lord say to him? You fool, you fool, tonight I'm gonna require, uh, your soul will gonna be taken away from you. And do you know that uh, the part of the world you can gain even though regardless of how big it is, you cannot keep it. You cannot keep it because for sure, when you pass away, you will leave it all behind, all behind. Uh, why is it foolish to do an exchange transaction? Number three is because the world with all your gain, it will never satisfy you. The world with all its gain will never satisfy you. Why? Because God is the only one who can give us a lasting satisfaction. Not riches, not wealth, not fame, not fortune, not even philosophy. Even if you are the smartest person in this world, 
you will never gain satisfaction because the real satisfaction in life is only found in having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not until you, you come to that, that area in your life that you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that's the only time that you can understand that really satisfaction, uh, the, the, real, the, the full satisfaction is only from the Lord. Why do you think a lot of people are, after they reach the top, commit suicide? Why do you think, uh, we have so many things, uh, people that after they reach the top of pain, the top of fortune, the top of everything, they still commit suicide because we are created by God with an, uh, because there's an emptiness, there's a voidness in our lives that only God can fill, only Jesus can fill. And no, no amount of money, no amount of fortune, no amount of uh, pain will satisfy. Uh, it will only satisfy you for temporarily. It's only for a short time. And then after that, it will, uh, you're still going to seek and look for satisfaction in life. Now, why is losing one soul a tragic loss? Why is it a loss? Because uh, every human soul, each one of us have, uh, have the mind, we have the heart, and we have the will, right? And one of the best things when God created the earth, uh, he created us with a freedom of choice. We are free to choose him. We are free to reject him. We are free to serve him. We are free not to serve him or serve the world or Satan. Uh, it's always a choice. Even, uh, even a teacher, even us teacher, pastor, or whatever, we can only tell you, but still, the choice is up to you. We cannot choose for you. You have to choose for yourself, right? Because each one will be accountable for your own personal choice in this life. You have, we are given, each of us are given only one human soul. We are given one human soul. There's no duplication. There's no, there's no uh, double. Nobody can get double soul. It's only one human soul. Now, why is losing one soul a tragic loss? It is a tragic loss because it is something that is irreversible. It's an irreversible loss. Once you lose it, that's it, right? So I remember uh, I, um, the example for this that uh, being irreversible is in the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. I will not read the whole passage, but I will just uh, select the scripture that suggests why is it irre irreversible loss it will be an irreversible loss why because the moment we can only choose why while we are alive while we are still living why we still can make our own choice and our own decision once death occurs you can no longer reverse uh, whatever is your choice and so in the parable of the, uh, the, rich, pool, uh, the rich man and Lazarus, uh, it says here that Lazarus uh, being poor and the rich man both die, right? And both of them uh, was taken. But then their destination is separate. Uh, the, the rich man goes to Hades, and, uh, which is hell, and the other one, the rich man, goes to heaven, right? But let me, uh, let me uh, pinpoint to you in verse 26. He said, but Abraham said, son, uh, oh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the, oh, the rich man. And in hell, he said here, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted his eyes, this is the rich man, and he said, uh, Father Abraham, uh, and he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and see it Abraham apart of and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receive all the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they 
which would pass from hands to you cannot either can they pass on to us what meaning to say uh, their destination is separate they can see each other they're still aware even though they're dead they're still aware of each other they're still aware of everything that is happening uh, uh, to in their lives but then one one of the things is the the place is separated and so this is uh, this is what I said to my Cypress Bible study group the reason why we don't believe in the prayer for the dead is because no amount of prayer for the dead will transfer the soul of the departed loved ones from purgatory to heaven because there's no such thing as purgatory in the Bible. In the Bible, you know, looking at the biblical point of view. So what is uh, what, what does it say? Once the decision should be made while we are still alive while we are still uh, you know can make the decision because nobody can decide for us nobody can pray for us to be transferred from one location to another location because our soul once it's lost it is irreversible loss another thing that we need to take note this loss is an immeasurable loss you know when you lose money you can you can measure it right so you will say, oh, I lost uh, one million. If we're, you're a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. So, 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 but we can measure. We can measure. It's something that is measurable. But when you lost your soul, it is immeasurable. Why? Because uh, he said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? It is more than the riches of the world. So it is immeasurable loss. Now, another thing that we can see why uh, losing a human soul is a tragic loss, it is an irreplaceable loss. You cannot replace it. You know how when you lose something, uh, let's say you lose an earring, right? So you will say, oh, I'll just buy another set of earrings, and I will replace the one that was lost, correct? But human soul, once you lose the human soul for not deciding to really accept Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you cannot replace it. Once you're there, you're there. And nobody can change your destination. Another thing, uh, it's only not an irreversible loss or immeasurable loss or irreplaceable loss. It is also an excusable loss. It is there's no excuse for you losing your soul because you are given the, by the Lord the chance to hear the gospel, to make a sound decision, but you still refuse to accept Jesus Christ in your heart and in your mind, in your, in your soul. You know, so it's an excusable loss. So uh, uh, the, the thing, uh, the Bible is confronting us with two choices. To whom are you going to give your allegiance? Are you going to give your allegiance to the Lord? Or are you going to give your allegiance to Satan and this world? Because we are always bombarded by all this sin, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These three are the common things that Satan is using uh, in us to attract us to him, to attract us to him. Uh, one of the things, are you going to choose? So given the two choices, which one are you going to side? You need to side, are you going to side with the victor side? Because the victory is already won 2,000 years ago, and we are always being uh, deceived by Satan into thinking that God is not a winner. Satan is already a loser. He lost uh, in, on the Calvary, uh, when Jesus died on the Calvary cross, and he resurrected from the dead. He already gained that victory over death, over sin. And that's the reason why Satan is a defeated foe. Are you going to side with the losers? Or are you going to side with the winner? The choice is up to you. And what does God offer? God offer to us eternal life. Right? Satan will offer to us eternal damnation. Eternal punishment. It's, it's both eternal but it's one is eternal life one is eternal damnation another thing god is opening you eternal home and the bible says it talks about the mansion in heaven that is being prepared for everyone that believes on his name satan has also prepared uh you know 
not mansion, but hell. And you know that in hell, according to the Bible, there will be torment, there will be no rest, and it will be a, a, a hot place, a very pla a, a hot place with all these worms and with, all, uh, with everything. And with all the smell, the foul odor. And uh, uh, you know, looking at the, those choices, the choice is up to you. The third one is, what does the Lord offer to us? The Lord offered to us peace of mind and heart. Have you noticed? Uh, I remember. Uh, uh, I remember teaching a class wherein uh, the lady said to me after she accepted Jesus Christ in her heart and in, in her life, she said to me something. Something. Uh, something happened to me. Uh, something different that I experienced. And I said, "What is that?" Oh, I said, "Come to think of it, now I can sleep soundly." Before. Uh, when I have so, uh, when I have problems, I cannot sleep. I am so worried. I have so many things that, and, and uh, the, it gives me insomnia. I was once sick of insomnia because I cannot go to sleep. I keep thinking of the problems and thinking of the problems and thinking of the problems. But then, when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, He gave me that peace. And do you know that one of the best things that the Lord is giving to us is that peace of mind and heart? A lot of people are teasing each other and saying, ah, we, we want to go to hell. Because in hell, we will continue drinking, uh, you know, uh, gambling, you know, whatever you're doing, womanizing, blah, 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 and everything. And I said, well, I don't think you understand what hell is all about. Because in hell, you cannot do that anymore. It will always be torment and anguish every day for the rest of your life eternity it's everlasting it's both everlasting so uh being given that one and uh another thing is the satisfaction only jesus can give you the full satisfaction in life no other none other no other and uh i would like uh i would like uh you to to choose because you are satisfied in heaven, you are dissatisfied in hell. And you, but then one thing, as I, 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 as I, um, I, I, I read several people who had uh, an out of body experience, uh, some of them died already and uh, their soul were brought to hell or heaven. There is one thing that I noticed in all their stories, is there's one thing that I noticed and one thing that they are saying is, do you know do you know that the lord is crying every time there's a lost soul going to hell do you know why he, he cried he said why is the lord crying because the reason why he died on the cross of calvary the reason why he suffered on the cross of calvary is because to pay for you and me to pay for our to redeem us from that penalty of sin and death but then every time uh, we are uh, ignoring the offer of God, which is the pre-salvation, we are insulting the Lord who created us into his image and into his likeness. We are insulting the Lord. And this morning, as I close this, uh, this uh, message, I want, you to, I want you to think about this. Where, uh, who is getting your full allegiance in this life? Are you giving it to the Lord or are you giving it to the world? You know that the world, Satan and his demons. Or are you giving it to the Lord and making sure that, Lord, I offer to you my life. I told Tim to, <laughs> I offer to you my life. Uh, we need to offer uh, our life to the Lord every day, our soul to the Lord every day. Why? Because day by day by day, we need to be delivered from the power of sin. We need to be saved from the power of sin. We're already saved when we put our faith and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we already saved from the penalty of sin, but now we need to be saved from the power of sin because sin, day in, day out, there are temptations and there are trials. So I will leave you with this choice. Whom are you going to, cho uh, whom are you going to choose and which one will you give your 100% allegiance? And it's the prayer of my heart that we will pledge 100% allegiance to the Lord. 
because He alone deserves all glory. He alone deserves all honor. He alone deserves all our praise. And we cannot repay Him. Even though we give our 100% allegiance to the Lord, we can never repay Him for what He has done for us. So, thank you.